my name is Rick and this is part two of the Mean.io tutorial building a goals application from scratch. So if you're here, that means you finished part one. If you have not watched part one, make sure you go watch it first because none of this is going to make sense if you haven't watched part one. So this is part two. So what the heck are we building? It's always good practice to reflect on what you're building before you ever build anything. What am I talking about? The fastest code is the one that you never write. Code is always more costly to modify after you have written it. This is why we're going to be reviewing the system requirements and use cases before we write any code. So what are the use cases? The use cases are going to be as follows. The admin can authenticate, log out, log in. The admin can do a full CRUD on blog, po blog posts. So this includes create, read, update, and delete. An admin can create, uh, read, update, and delete goals. An admin can create sub goals, read them, update them, and delete them. An admin can have goals page, which you can create, read, update, and delete. A guest can read goals page, update the, uh, read the about page, read the blog, read the contact. A guest can write to the com comments on to blog and a guest can write to contact form. Database design. This is a database design. It's a really simple design for now. We have a user, we have a goals page, we have a goal, we have a sub goal, we have a status, and we have a progress. Prototypes. So these are the prototypes that I have mocked up for this project. It, right now it's really simple and this is kind of how I imagine the system working. On the very top, these, this is pretty much called a, a yearly page. And what a yearly page allows you allows the individual to do is to have an overview of that year and pretty much saying, you know, the big major goals that are going to be completed for that year. And as you can tell, we have this left side left side navigation bar. And here we have 2015, 2014. And the idea behind this is that essentially every year you want to come back to this application and start inputting every year so you can actually track 2015, 2014, you know, 2016, 2017, and so on and so forth. So it, the, for now, the application has a, a set of list of goals, and each of the goals has a title, a description, a status, and a completion date. Uh, if the completion date has not been reached, they can, it can be shown as in progress. As you can tell, we have this status navigation um, that allows you to check the status of your current goal. This way you're motivated and you're more likely to complete the goal because you're looking at this percentage. You can actually see your work you put into that into the, the goal and you're actually moving forward. So each of these goals has a drop down list. You can click on the drop down list and you will get the following list. Now the following list has a title, uh, which is pretty much the goal name. We have a description, we have a status, and we have a completed date on. Uh, as you can see right here, uh, right now, each of the goals composes of smaller goals. So these are essentially called sub-goals. And the whole idea behind this is that you can actually take one goal and break it up into many, many, many uh, sub-goals that all lead up to you completing the final last goal. I'll give you an example of this. I want to publish 100 videos for next year. That's a pretty, pretty difficult goal, and it's going to require a lot of uh, different components in my life to make that happen. And one of them has to be, let's say, for example, wake up at 5 a.m. so I can write, and then at 7 a.m. have the video published. And essentially, I want to cut this up to like, a, 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 so that could be goal, sub goal number one, wake up early. Sub goal number two would be, uh, would be to pretty much say I will publish three videos every two weeks, for example. Now, as you can see, we have two sub goals for the larger goal, which is to publish 100 videos. And as you can see, many of the goals compose of very much smaller goals. And that's the whole idea about the SMART uh, uh, philosophy, right? It's to be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and have a timeline for that goal. Moving on, this is the About page. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward. It's just going to have an image of the individual with a short uh, bio on them. And finally, the last part. This is not complete. I know what you must be thinking. Um, the following system design is not complete. And by all means, I don't want it to be complete. I'm creating this guy for a real 
world application, as with many systems that go through the software development cycle, the applications tend to change as we find issues that we find that we did not anticipate from the beginning. This includes business rules, functional requirements, system testing, limitations that we do not perceive at this moment. As I'm making this video, I actually have not created this application. I'm actually doing this application as if I were to do it for a client where I actually mock up a project, I give them an estimate, I created pretty much a document like this where I show them the prototypes, use cases, and then after it gets approved, I go ahead and start actually developing the application. And I'm doing the same thing with this project. This is actually not completed. So at the end, the application might look completely different than what it is now, but it, it might not vary by that much because obviously we have a pretty concise picture of what we want to build. Can we code now? Uh, sure, we can go ahead and start coding now. Um, so if you have not SSH into the server, make sure you do. Once you're SSH into the server, make sure you go on to that directory we made on the previous video. And as good software engineers, we want to go ahead and remove the old Git repository. Now, once we have removed it, we want to go ahead and clone the one where we're actually going to be committing our changes. And for those of you that are interested, we're going to actually go to this link here. And as you can see, we have pretty much an empty repository at GitHub. So now this should have cloned. Now we need to move that Git repo to tell Git that we're actually here. And this is pretty much just a move command. So there you go. Now, Git knows that this is a Git repository. We want to go ahead and grab the date. So you can do this by date. And if you do Git status, you should get back all these new files that are in there. So you need to do Git add. This will add all the files into the repo and you go Git status and then you should see all these files added. So now if you do uh, Git log, you should see initial commit like, like it was on that repository. So now we're going to do uh, date. This should give you back the date that's right now. And we're going to do git commit a minus m. We're going to give it a message. We're going to say forked mean.io on the date and initial commit. So this went ahead and committed that to a repository. So now if we do a git log, we can actually see that we went ahead and committed that change. So now I'm going to go ahead and open a new tab back into my machine and I'm going to do a uh, we're going to open up Sublime. So we're going to be using for this project Sublime Text. You're more than welcome to use whatever text editor you want. I like Sublime, so we're going to be using Sublime. If you like TextMate, that's fine. If you're if you're a Notepad++, that's fine. Even if you want to use NetBeans, that is great and dandy. But for, for me, I'm going to use Sublime. So I'm going to say Subi, uh, Volumes, uh, dub, 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 and then no Rick. And um, for those of you uh, that don't have Sublime, pretty much you just have to mount the directory from the shared on the server to your local machine. And once you have it mounted, you can go ahead and open up that directory with uh, your file explorer or command line or whichever way you want to do it. So now let me go ahead and shrink this window here. Perfect. Um, we're going to go back into the command line, clear this out close this window and now we're here at the at the project so if you never work with the node application this file structure might look a little bit different and you might be asking yourself well hold on what are all these files what is everything happening how are we going to actually code our application where did all these files come from what are all these folders and and we're going to go over these folders and kind of try to understand how this application is laid out so we can better uh, figure out how we're actually going to code our requirements up for this app. So as you can see, we have three folders here. We have a Bower Cache, Bower Registry, and Bower Temp, and Bower Components. Uh, you necessarily don't want to touch none of these folders because these are managed by the Bower uh, manager. Um, so if in the previous uh, video we did Bower install and what this did went ahead and, and got all those JavaScript files from all those libraries and put them into that folder. So if you go to Bower components, you can see we got all these libraries. Like I said, usually don't need to go in here, but for whatever reason it exists. So here it is. So you understand what that is. Now we have this config folder. Um, 
I think this will be a little bit better if so we have this config folder and we have an assets JSON and an Express JS and an environment folder which has uh, all development, production, and test. Now, if you've never done a uh, Express application or a Node application before, you can think of this like a Bootstrap file. So a Bootstrap file usually comes from the PHP world, and those are usually pretty much an entry point into the application. So in essence, bootstrapping your application to get going. Um, if you never worked in any, any PHP framework, you can think about this like in Java, your main project, essentially, you know, what what calls other classes and so on and so forth. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at some of these files. We have this assets JSON folder file, and this is actually uh, going into the Bower components and com telling what what are assets going to be actually used for this project. So we're going to be using jQuery, Angular, uh, you know, Angular Cookie, Bootstrap, Bootstrap UI, so on and so forth. Express. This is this is the Bootstrap file that I was talking to you about. So this is pretty much what 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 kickstarts your application to actually run. If you're not familiar with Express, uh, I'm going to go really through this file really quick. So we're actually going to be coming back in here in the future video and, and modifying this file to fit our application. So for now, um, pretty much what you want to uh, think about here, these are our module dependencies. And these dependencies are coming from these node module folder. So as you can see, we're requiring mean IO. So if you go down here, uh, let's see, mean IO, and we're requiring that dependency. So uh, pretty much this is what this is doing. Uh, it's doing a couple callbacks here, and this is pretty much initiating the application. I won't go into it too much here. We'll, we'll come back here to this folder later. Uh, this, environment, this environment folder here now has a couple of them. It has test, production, development, and all. And in, in essence, this is pretty much uh, starting in the application on which environment you're in. Uh, so depending on what configuration you want to do. For example, here's the mean full stack development. We're going to go ahead and change this to no Rick. And this is pretty much just changing the title of the application. But once again, we don't need to know everything, every single detail here. We'll come back to this later. Close this up. So now we have a couple of things. We have a known Rick, which is actually that directory that we cloned from GitHub. So we're going to actually go ahead and remove that. So let me do this real quick. And what that did, that removed that clone that we did with GitHub. So if you go to projects, refresh folders, it's gone now. Node packages, we covered this already. These are all the node dependencies. Now packages uh, is what essentially mean.io does for uh, does it does so you can actually use for your application so uh in, in essence it's pretty much like pulling in a library but it's essentially a package so the best way to i can explain this to you is probably if you go to mean io and you click on packages you can see this list of packages that uh, the community has essentially built um, to pretty much make it easier to work with mean io and as you can tell uh these are these are some handy packages, um, but for us, we're not necessarily going to be using them. So uh, we're going to be using some of them, but not all of them. As you can see, we have a couple packages. We have access, article, contrib, system, theme, and user. And these these outer packages are in essence what the mean IO team is maintaining. Uh, this contrib is pretty much cont contributed modules. So if you decide to use any of them, for example, here's mean, mean admin. If you come back over here, contributed mean admin. As you can see, those match up perfectly. So if you decide to install one of those packages, they're going to end up in this contrib folder. Now, if you decide to create your own package, this would actually go into a different um, into a different directory, but we'll cover that later. Tools. Now, if you're familiar with uh, JavaScript and how uh, Node.js applications work, you can actually go on here and change your uh, uh, build tools. So if you're used to Gulp, you can use Gulp. If you're, if you're okay with Grunt, we can go ahead and just keep using Grunt. 
Now, we have a couple of uh, files here. We have this .bowerrc. And essentially what this is saying is pretty much configuring Bower. So I won't go too much into that. A CSS linting, we have a git ignore file. We have a couple more files here. Now here's this Bower JSON folder file that I was talking about. And here's pretty much where your dependencies are. So if, you, if you're looking for a specific version of a, la a library, you can actually go ahead and configure that here. And here's this grunt file. I mentioned this in the previous video. When you run grunt on the command line, essentially what's happening is, is you're actually calling this function here. And this function has a callback. And the callback is pretty much checking all these different configurations that the mean IO team has built for us. And pretty much what they are is different linting. So here we got JS lint, CSS lint. And what linting is, is pretty much a configuration that you can actually configure how a specific piece of code should be formatted. And, and this, is, this is pretty much just checking for that. There's a couple other things, like I said, if you know Grunt, you can come in here and, and customize this file to whichever way you want. We have a Karma configuration file. I won't go too much into Karma. We can cover this later. We have a license. We have a mean.json file. We have a package.json. And this package.json is pretty much all the dependencies that are depending on the NPM package manager. Uh, like I said, we already ran NPM install, so we're good there. A proc file, if you're ready for deployment, you need to worry about this proc file, but for now, we don't. Here's a readme, and here's a server configuration. So that's pretty much about it. I just pretty much walked you through the whole entire file structure for mean.io. Uh, hopefully in the next video, we'll actually dig into the code and start modifying this code and start implementing some of those system requirements and some of those use cases, and even include some GUI components. So till next time, We'll see ya.